Hey guys, long time no video. Um, it's me, do you remember me? It's been a couple of months since my last voiceover video um, because it's been a couple of months since I've had a computer that can render video. <laughs> my laptop um, died, so I could just about use After Effects but it would not render for the life of me. Um, so these past couple of weeks I've just focused on what I could do while I was trying to get my new computer sorted, which took forever. Um, so I decided to be like, right, can't do, um, can't do videos, can't, can do animation, but can't render it, not even in Critter properly. Um, so I decided to um, kind of, at first I was just supposed to be um, fixing up some of the art from this um, older project of mine. Um, heartstrings um, but then in the end I looked at the story and I didn't really like how it went anymore and I decided to change the ending so I re-storyboarded it and the original 12 page comic ended up at 41 pages um, and I really like it better like that because um, before um, in uni I was trying to squish as much in um, and also the comic project was for a wordless narratives project so that was depressing because I hate doing wordless narratives um, like they're great in their place but like sometimes you just need like a couple of words can communicate so much and it's like impossible to tell the same story with pictures especially um, the story I was telling was very like fairy tale themed and there was lots of magic so you couldn't really understand what exactly was going on just from the pictures. Um, and I didn't really like that, so um, on my rewrite, I, I freed myself and added words. Um, and I'm really happy with how the story came out. Um, part of the reason why it's 41 pages now is because I've spent a lot more time on the actual journey of the story, as well as like the plot there's more time for like sitting and looking at the scenery but um really a bit like um kind of like samurai jack that sort of um that sort of pacing um so the action has like um stillness to counter it i guess um and i got to practice drawing landscapes which uh, i'm really enjoying lately <laughs> I think my figures have gotten quite stiff um, because I've just been doing for animation so I haven't been worrying about each individual drawing um, but when, then when you take it to a comic where each individual drawing is, is um, going to be seen for a lot longer than an eighth of a second um, it really notices, a, notices I think um, and it's been really fun to like create all the worlds and stuff. Um, yeah, please, please go read my comic if just to look at all the frigging buildings I've drawn and all the hands I've drawn. <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought I'd record this video to show you guys my process. Um, it's been going along while I've been rambling about where I've been. <laughs> So yeah, what I did um, was I made the, I did the story for the comic um, in my trusty sketchbook, um, but then I went and did thumbnails in Clip Studio Paint. I made like a template for my pages and just um, thumbnailed it out, um, except instead of a thumbnail size, I was working on the full size canvas except the drawings were just scribbles um, so I knew what was going on um, and I did that the whole way through the comic um, so that like I had all the files set up and because I copied and I didn't copy and paste I like made a template file and opened it every time and saved it under a new name once I finished drawing it um, because I'd done that I knew that all the gutters around the edges of the pages would be consistent and that um, because like some people might not notice but like for the people that do notice <laughs> they
they get very upset. Um, and consistency, like, especially when it's like, you can just do it like that. Um, it's really good to be consistent where you possibly can. Um, so yeah, I did 40 files of that. And then um, when I went through the pages, you'll have seen at the beginning, when I went through and started to actually um, properly draw the pages, um, I opened two files at once and put them as a, like a double spread on my monitor because it's quite wide. I can do that. Um, and it just helps to like keep in mind the panel designs um, when you're like planning out um, what the panels will look like and stuff. Um, if you're making it for print, obviously if you're making it for just the web, then you don't need to worry. <laughs> um, but because this is intended for print, in the end, um, don't worry, I will let you guys know when you can buy it or pre-order the book because it's going to be a lot of money to get a hundred books printed. Um, so please be on the lookout if you're at all interested in buying them. Um, spawn. Spawn by me. <laughs> um, so yeah, then when I went into each page, uh, what I do first is do the speech bubbles. Um, Clip Studio Paint is quite handy for speech bubbles because it's for manga. Um, it's especially useful for that. Um, and yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I've got the video open in front of me and I just accidentally trimmed the work area somehow um, of my video because I am good at things. Mm -hmm. Good at things. <laughs> um, yeah, Clip Studio has lots of good things, especially for speech bubbles and there's like speech bubble vector tools which are quite handy. Um, so yeah, I don't know about like Photoshop or Sai. Um, I'm sure they probably have similar things by now, um, they didn't used to. Um, so yeah, I go through and do all the speech bubbles first because um, if you're doing them quite large like I am, they actually take up quite a lot of the space and the white of them and the writing really um, attracts the viewer's eye. So it's really important to have them in place so they're not covering up the art um, and so that you're not um, <coughs> leading the reader on a wild goose chase around the page um, because you've had to like stuff it somewhere at the last minute because you didn't want to cover up your art. Excuse me, I haven't talked for this long in a while. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I go through and do I do the sketches um, from the scribbles. <laughs> um, going through correcting the anatomy from everything, trying to make sure it's all like appealing and drawn nicely. Um, what I did with this page, which was quite different than usual, was one of the um, panels um, with the boy and the tiger having a little cuddle. Um, I really liked the sketch, so I decided to make it into a little sticker to chuck in my Redbubble store and maybe use for like promotional materials and stuff. Um, so what I did was I cut and pasted that onto a new canvas, um, coloured it in um, so that I could um, have the bits of the illustration that extended out from, the pa from behind the panel gutter. Um, uh, as you can see it's like, it's like he's cut off um, by the gutter. Um, so yeah, I just put that into a different canvas so I could draw the whole thing. Um, and then I uh, did that panel first. I coloured it in with my usual ink pen, size 10, vector layer. Um, then did the colouring for that and then just copied and pasted all the layers in um, into the uh, document that I was using originally. So, and then I could just trim it off rather than have to draw on extra bits. Um, so yeah, and then I uh, went on to um, ink up the rest of the panels, um, which is taking me really long time at the moment. 
I need to find my, like, find my happy lines. I'm really struggling with lines at the moment. Um, because I tried doing it lineless, it didn't look very nice. Tried using like a chalk outline, didn't look very nice. Those are my two <laughs> go-to techniques for usually. Um, so I'm like, right, let's go back to good old ink pen, ink pen tool, see how it goes. Um, I think it's okay. It's not like the nicest lines I've ever done. <laughs> and I think, um, it could look a lot better, but I think also that's to do with how stiff my figures are looking lately, like I said earlier. Um, so yeah, and then um, Clip Studio Paint, um, the flood fill tool is quite good, but it's not perfect. So I usually go in, go through, flood fill everything, um, then, then go back and fix all the little gaps that it's um, missed. before, yeah. Um, some of the pages I haven't done shading, um, the pages that have dramatic lighting I have done shading um, because even though it's a pain it just didn't look right without it. Um, and also so many tigers, some of these pages have had like five or six tigers on each page so they need special colouring. Um, what I did for the tigers was I selected, it's called Select Color Gamut, I think it's available on Photoshop and probably Sai as well. Um, so you can like select all the orange um, and then, or like that particular shade of orange, and then I um, used the airbrush to brush a darker orange onto its back, then um, I went onto a clipping layer above, um, did the white, um, under her chin and her tummy and then I did another layer for the stripes and keeping it on so many layers made it easier for me to um, edit them um, like if I drew a stripe and it wasn't right if you'd done it on the same layer as all the others you couldn't keep the smooth gradient underneath if you tried to erase it um, and there's only so much the undo, undo tool can do <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, the father's face, that was another thing that had to have a bit more attention because his beard is just kind of a gradient brushed on with the watercolour brush tool, so I had to do that separately every time. Um, and like when you're doing a comic or an animation, like sometimes it does really look nice to use like gradients and stuff like that, um, but you kind of have to be mindful of that when you're planning the character design because you're going to have to do it all over and over again. So you have to balance like, um, will this look good as well as will this be just taking too much time? Um, and like the tiger, like it was important that she looked really nice. So I did use lots of gradients and by the end I got quite quick in doing it. Um, and the father, he's not in too much. So I didn't mind um, redrawing that beard over and over again and in his hair there are some streaks of different colours. So yeah, what I did after that um, is the background, like I've been having trouble with this as well actually, having come from animation to comics, is my pages have looked really cluttered or else really bare. Um, so it's quite hard to plan the composition when there's lots of tiny little elements like you'll see in a bit. There's lots of like fish and background and stars and things in these panels. So like things that help with that is like keeping the overall composition in mind and like trying to keep the contrast and the colours. The contrast in like value and the contrast in colours, like um, keep that kind of focusing around your character. So like um, with the boy and the tiger it's quite easy because they, his orange shirt and the tiger's orange body, like they're naturally colours that your eye is drawn to, like your eye registers warm colours first, especially red and orange and yellow and I try and keep the background in cool colours and try to keep the main areas of contrast kind of along your eye's path. Um, it's 
I, I'm still hit and miss. I'm just kind of learning as I go, or like relearning. Um, but I think my later pages are looking a bit better. Um, so yeah, it's quite hard to balance how much detail you need in the background as well. Um, because otherwise you can just spend your whole life drawing buildings. Um, so sometimes silhouettes have looked really effective for me, or else like silhouettes and like slightly misregistered, um, really quick line art. Um, like for the um, panels where the background is more the focus, I will just like sometimes you do just have to spend the time and like just draw a whole bunch of buildings or like the mountainside or shade everything all beautifully. Um, and I've been taking some inspiration from Steven Universe um, because the way they um, usually do their backgrounds is they have a background um, artist who draws the lines and then a background painter who paints them separately. So I've been trying to use more of that sort of approach. Um, like viewing the lines as not the only indication of where colour and shade should be and trying to add more like texture in the shading um, like they often do in Steven Universe. Like if you look at their um, backgrounds, if you look at in that the like bushes or the cliffs, you'll notice that the lines aren't just um, wrapping nicely around a block of colour. Um, within like the outline there will be the detail is added with um, just like a subtle tonal difference in the colour so it it provides the like rich texture that makes you feel like the world is real um, but it doesn't um, distract from the characters so much um, and because animation backgrounds the character will be moving it's not entirely the same making an animation background to making a comic background, but there's lots of like overlap. Um, so yeah, I think maybe some of these backgrounds have been distracting from the um, viewer, but you know, it's just you, you live and learn. This video is coming to an end now. Um, hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you again soon with more stuff. Okay, bye bye. Have a good day.